Laughter by Khalil Gibran. Now, what's fascinating about this book is I don't know how I got it. All I know is that it was on my bookshelf. And I figured maybe, maybe my cousins gave it to me, maybe, my, maybe I found it at my grandparents' house. I have no idea. And so, going into this book, I had no idea where I got it or what it was about. Just basically no idea. And so this was one of those blind reads, you know? It's like, ooh, well, this is kind of exciting. And ladies and gentlemen, I was so... I was kind of blown away by how interesting and how beneficial uh, the writings in this book were to me. To explain to you what Tears and Laughter really is, is it's what it is, is it's a collection of parables, short stories, and poetry by Khalil Gibran. He's basically characterized as the immortal prophet of Lebanon and the savant of his age. And most of these writings were written when this guy was 20 years old. All of these short stories, these poems, these uh, parables were written when the guy was extremely young. And it's amazing knowing that and then reading these stories because they're very deep, they're very insightful, and they're very nuanced. It, it really, you know, I haven't read a whole lot of Eastern literature or Eastern thoughts on religion, but this was a little bit of an introduction to some of that some of that thought, and I found it, you know, truth is true wherever it is. And there's a lot of truth in what this uh, guy Khalil had to say. And, uh, you know, I mean, like, the stories in this, I'm not really going to go through each of them, but, like, I mean, the criminal, great, like, a great story of how people become jaded and become criminals. I mean, like, there's, from the beginning... The book is just really, really fascinating, and I learned a lot. And uh, there's a couple passages I would like to read to you. Just little passages, little sayings that I think are really, really beautiful and beautifully said. Now, this passage that I want to read is from the story, The Widow and Her Son. And basically, at this point in the story, it's towards the end, and uh, the story is only two pages long. And the widow is talking to her son and having basically him pray with her and she says repeat after me uh, and this is what she says and it's beautiful god have mercy on the poor and protect them from the winter warm their thin clad bodies with thy merciful hands look upon the orphans who are sleeping in wretched houses suffering from hunger and cold hear o lord the call of widows who are helpless and shivering with fear for their young open o lord the hearts of all humans that they may see the misery of the weak have mercy upon the sufferers who knock on doors and lead the wayfarers into warm places. Watch, O Lord, over the little birds and protect the trees and fields from the anger of the storm, for thou art merciful and full of love. And this was about during winter. And I don't, you know, it's just a beautiful passage. And I, I really, I just thought the writing, I was like, man, this is really inspired stuff. And uh, another story that, I thought was terrific was uh, Two Wishes. Now, I'm not going to read the whole story, but I will read one line from it that is absolutely true. Only those return to eternity who on earth seek out eternity. So if you are religious, um, or even if you're not religious, that is something to think about. Because a lot of people are like, uh, like I've had people that are atheists who are like, uh, because uh, I, I do believe that there is a God, and I do believe uh, I am, I'm a Christian. Uh, and uh, I've had people ask me, um, you know, whether, be, whether they be atheists or uh, other, you know, religious people. They're like, so if I don't believe what you believe, do you think I'm going to hell? And, and they say, I reject, you know, Christianity. I reject the idea that there is a God. Am I going to go to hell for that? And really, the truth is, only those return to eternity who on earth seek out eternity. Um, you know, if if you're looking at, if, let's say, just for example, let's look at the, the Bible, the Christian interpretation of the afterlife and all of that. Well, you have a deal that you have to make there. You have to believe and serve God in order to go to heaven. If you're a person who's like, I reject all that shit, 
then aren't you just being like, aren't you choosing to not go to heaven? I mean, it seems like it because you said no. And it's the same thing with, you know, it's anything. Maybe, maybe it's not even like a question of heaven and hell. Maybe it really is just like, if you believe, maybe, you know, because, you know, I have this whole religious book series going on this uh, channel, me reading all these different, you know, religious texts. And um, maybe this this little saying right here has a lot to say. Maybe, maybe heaven is for those that want to go there and those that don't seek it out, they just die and cease to exist fully, even their soul. I don't know, it's a very thought-provoking saying. Now, the last passage I would like to read to you, and this, this whole story was called uh, Yesterday and Today, and this had to do with greed and money and all this stuff. And this is a beautiful paragraph uh, towards the end, and uh, I'd just like to read it to you because it's true. It's absolutely true. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and begin. Everything in life is good, even gold, for it teaches a lesson. Money is like a stringed instrument. He who does not know how to use it properly will hear only discordant music. Money is like love. It kills slowly and painfully the one who withholds it, and it enlivens the other who turns it upon his fellow men. It's amazing. It's, you know, it's just like that right there, it's true. It's absolute truth. And uh, I really feel that way about most of this book. I feel like there's a lot of truth to get out of this, a lot of lessons to be learned. And yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot recommend uh, Tears and Laughter more. I thought it was an excellent book. Uh, if I was gonna give it a grade, I, I mean, it's not the most earth shattering book I've ever read, but it's, it's all I will say is it's, I highly recommend that you read it. I'm not gonna give it a grade, except for that it's, it's really, really good. And I really enjoyed it. And I really got a lot, a lot out of it. And I think you will too. So ladies and gentlemen, those are my thoughts on tears and laughter. I didn't cry. I didn't really laugh, but I got to the truth of it all. <laughs> um, anyway, I don't know where I was going with that. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, if you have read by chance, Tears and Laughter by Khalil Gibran, Please leave any comments, questions, ideas, thoughts in the comment section below of this video and I will love to take a look at them. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, if you like this video, please like it and subscribe. Tell your friends about the channel and never forget to